Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams, and I am privileged today to be joined on the summit by Ryan Smith, who is the head football coach at SAGU. The Southwestern Assembly of God Lions are going to be playing beyond the regular season, eight and three on the year, and they've been invited to participate in the NCCAA's Victory Bowl. So, Coach, let's talk about that for just a moment. A great postseason opportunity for SAGU, and, and congratulations. Yeah, we're excited. You know, I, I've been telling my guys since Sunday afternoon that, you know, there's only 18 NAIA teams still playing, and we're one of those, and there's only going to be two of those teams that actually end their season with a win, and we've got a chance to be one of those. So, uh, you know, in the process of building this program, we're just really excited to be here. This is a great opportunity. No doubt, and, and what a great way to look at it, too. I mean, that that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, noon kickoff on Saturday. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. In the meantime, let's look back on your season just a little bit. You you open the year, first half of the year. I mean, it's had to be a roller coaster ride. Win loss, win loss, win loss, and and then you rattle off five consecutive victories to close out the season. I'm sure that's the way you, you know you drew it up uh, like that. <laughs> Get them all on the right path, and then go down there. That includes, by the way, a big win at Langston to. To close out the year this past Saturday, 41 to 24 on the road. Both teams eight and two coming in. That was a big win as well. Uh, yes, sir. You know, when you look at the schedule, I think our the Sooner Athletic Conference is extremely talented. We've got some really good coaches in this conference. And uh, so, you know, every week you're going to get really good scheme and schematics of football. So you've got to be prepared as a coach. And there's always exceptional talent on the field. So we knew early on, you know, it was going to be kind of a give and go. Uh, we had some tough games. You know, the trip to Arizona is always tough. Uh, we yeah. felt like we competed in all of those. So you come out three and three, but at the same time, you, you know, you can take, you can isolate to two or three plays and go, this could have very easily been a five and one, potentially six and zero, oh, just based on a few plays. So you're trying to get guys to understand process and just that it, it is a process and, and everything is isolated and, you know, you've got to take the good and the bad. You can't just watch your highlight reel, but you've got to see the things you need to improve on and the things that give you the, the confidence and the belief moving forward based on your success. And, you know, going into these last uh, five, there's just been a, an understanding that we've started to find our identity as an offense. And I'm always big on telling our staff and our players that offense is about identity. And that's predicated on quarterback play and, you know, what you guys do up front, how successful you are with your skill position. But defense is really mentality. So you can, you know, defensively, you can have some substitutions and some movement and still have the same mentality. Are we going to get to the football? Are we going to, you know, we're going to create turnovers. Are we going to be really successful and sound at every level? And then special teams is always, you know, it's, it's always the break for me, you know, and the fact of, can we create a positive impact on the game and the element of special teams? And we've done that in, in the last five. And that's kind of been our growth of understanding process. But then also I've been really proud of our guys just to be able to isolate and go, okay, that was Saturday. This was good. This was bad. Now let's move forward and let's continue to be about our process. Well, Coach, it seems like that 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 is has been instilled, and especially you're seeing the results of that over the course of the season. Again, five consecutive wins to close out the season and trying to get a sixth one in the Victory Bowl coming up on Saturday. I'm visiting now with Coach Ryan Smith from Southwestern Assemblies of God here on the Summit, and I encourage you, please do consider subscribing to the channel. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. You talked about quarterback play, so let's go right there. Jordan Barlow, a junior, leading the way for you this year more than 2,500 yards passing 23 touchdowns to just six interceptions and he's been able, to, been able to pick up ground on the ground as well more than 500 yards rushing your second leading rusher so uh, he's leading the way for that offense yeah you know Jordan did a tre uh, tremendous job all year and he's just started to understand the the dynamics of what we're trying to do spatial awareness and and just reading things and identification of things. And, you know, it just takes time. And last year was such a weird year. I mean, we played seven games over 26 weeks. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, our first game was, uh, I think, late October. Our last game was April 10th. Um, so you never really got in rhythm. So we were very curious taking the same 11 starters back. What would it look like week in and week out once we got in rhythm? And we're starting to see the fruit of that. Uh, being a former quarterback, I played quarterback here in the early 2000s. So everything about this offense and everything that I've done through 17, 18 years of coaching at various levels 
has all centered around quarterback play and what that quarterback can do. And we build the system around him. So, you know, me figuring out him is just as important as him figuring out me and us then start working together. And that's what's been fun. And he's a lot of fun to work with. I don't consider my, I'm coaching him. We're just working together and building this thing. So he, he's a tremendous, he's like, I'm a coach on the field. Well, that, it, and it, and it shows too. I mean, you're seeing the results again from, from what he's doing. You look at the other side of the ball and, and you got somebody like Keandre Belcher, a senior defensive lineman who's just made himself at home on the other side of the line, 14 tackles for loss, four sacks as well, forced to fumble, blocked to kick, uh, leading the way as you, you've been able to get a good defensive effort this year too. Yeah, you know, Belcher's been the epitome of consistency. We came in here together. I got here in the spring of uh, 18. He was signed uh, early February by our current defensive coordinator. And, uh, you know, so we've been here together the whole time. So it's been a lot of fun. We've been able to kind of hit the reset button and build the program together. Uh, he's one of those guys that said, I believe in this and, you know, let's let's build it forward. So he's, he's the epitome of consistency. I mean, you know, I tell him all the time, Tuesday and Wednesday, he's, he's the walking wounded, but we just keep putting duct tape <laughs> and super glue on him. And he rolls on Saturday, you know, so <laughs> – him, you match that with with the Drake Rodriguez, a high motor guy who's also got the greatest hair in college football of, of any human I've ever met. Uh, speaking for a guy that doesn't have hair, exactly. um, our linebacking course did a really good job. We utilize a lot of different guys there, but they've done a a really good job. And then on the back end with with Isaac Gowdy, who and, and then Jalen Moss, uh, who's who's banged up a little bit, and he's back now. And then our cornerback play with Kevion Davis and some of those other guys. Uh, and, you know, I'd be remiss – I'd miss somebody's name. But uh, our defensively, again, you're talking mentality on three different levels. So it's easy to talk about all those guys. But Belcher is kind of that 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 guy that just holds it together in the middle. And, and you know, come Saturday, you're going to get the best version of him uh, physically, mentally, from a leadership standpoint, spiritually, all of those dynamics. You're just getting it. You know, you're getting a guy who's very invested into what we're doing here at SAGU. He loves the campus. He loves the players. He loves everything about it. So it, it's, it's a, it helps you sleep at night. That's for sure. Well, coach, there's, there, there's very little that duct tape and super glue can't solve anyway. So that's all right. You need to have some of that on hand. I think no matter what profession you're in and obviously in coaching as well, playing in the victory bowl, this will be the third time that the program then has had an opportunity to to compete in this. And when you think about the NAI, you don't, don't often think about postseason bowl games, What's, what's this like for your program and, and just this opportunity? Well, you're, you're always trying to, you know, you're, you're trying to envision casting and all that. We, we, we talk about a five-year plan and process, and we're in year four of our build. <clears throat> and, you know, this whole – the whole theme this year has been reap results, which is, you know, out of Galatians, says, do not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest uh, if you don't give up. And – you know, and reap results. And we talked about what that looked like and the aspect of sowing and reaping. And that's kind of been our big selling point. So for us, you're just looking for those landmarks throughout the, the build. And this is a landmark. This is postseason play. Don't care what mm -hmm. you call it. Don't care how it looks. We're just as thankful to play in this as we would be any other element. I mean, this is a huge opportunity for us. And getting to host is a blessing, too. We have one guy on our roster in Blaine Rowe. Uh, he's our tight end. Uh, I think he's a sixth or seventh or eighth year senior. I'm not real sure with COVID and red shirts and mad red shirts and everything else. I've told him he's going to be old as me if, if he keeps playing. But uh, he's one of our few guys that's kind of an alpha in the room for us that played in, in the, the last time they played in it. So, you know, him seeing from that point to this point and being a part of those, both of those processes. But for our guys, I mean – you know, we tell our guys, man, this is just as important as anything else. And we get a chance to win our end our season with a win. I mean, we're playing a really good opponent, but it is a huge landmark for our staff so that we can gauge our progress. And, you know, you kind of see the fruit of your labor, so to speak. That's fantastic. And I and I really appreciate the the wisdom expressed in all of that. So thank you, Coach. I, I, it's always fun to get to talk with coaches, but you get to learn something along the way, too. That is that is it. Well, tell us then a little bit about the, the matchup that we have an opportunity to see again Saturday. It's a noon kickoff, and folks will be able to watch it on the Sagu Sports Network, I believe now. That's, that's the way it's turned out. And, and so that you can find that online on YouTube, watch it live. They do a fantastic job. Uh, with the production there, I, I think you, everyone, if you get a chance to watch it, you'll be pleased with the quality and just something really special. Coach, in light of that, 
that then without giving away state secrets. Uh, what, do you, what do you see? Sterling coming in, Sterling 6-5 and five coming out of a strong KCAC. Uh, tough competition up there as well. And, and what, what are we looking at for Saturday? Uh, Sterling's a really good football team. The biggest thing you see is discipline. They're always in the right spot. Uh, you know, defensively, they're 3-4. They're but they line up well, they get lined up, and they're sound. And we've talked to our offense all week about, you know, things may not be as explosive as they have been just because – they have a lot of what I call level integrity in their defense, and they're always in the right spot. And they rally to the football really well. They don't miss tackles. Offensively, they execute. They utilize personnel groupings and do those things. Uh, so for us, you know, we just know we're going to get a disciplined football game. Uh, you know, and, and that KCAC is a really good conference. I've uh, been able to speak to Coach a few times on the phone. Seems like a great guy. You know, th- this experience – when you, you factor in the community service project and us getting to get together, uh, man, it's just, it's a great two days and uh, a lot of respect for those guys, just based on the film and the conversations I've had with coach, we're excited about it. You're always trying to gauge your, your, your standards from conference to conference. You know, that's a big thing, especially with us being a young conference and the sooner I want us to have credibility. So I know that when we go out Saturday, we represent, you know, not only our, our our program and our institution and our families, but we're also representing the entire Sooner Athletic Conference, and we want to represent it well. So, you know, we're, we're looking to go out and play extremely well and give ourselves a chance to win, but we do know that we have to play well. This is a good opponent. All right. Well, then – Success to you all as you all head out to the Victory Bowl. Actually, head out. You're going to stay home for that. that yes, that's sir. nice. I'm sure that the, yes. the players get to sleep in their own bed. So that's that's a plus then as well. That doesn't happen with the bowl game very often, but it does in this case. Again, noon kickoff. They'll have a pregame show as well. Friends of the channel too, folks over there at the Sagu Sports Network. We appreciate their work. Coach Ryan Smith, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit, talking about your team. It's been a great year and one more opportunity. So good luck on Saturday. Thank you, man. I really appreciate you and all that you do. Appreciate you giving me the opportunity to be on here. Thank you, sir.